a lot of people just seem to like making attachments for their lathe as a sort of hobby. I don't. If I make something, it's usually with a specific, well it's always with a specific purpose in mind and quick and easy and dirty is usually the way I go. So what we've got here is the constituent parts of a very simple and not all that accurate, but it doesn't need to be, uh, indexing device for the MIFA. It works on the ML7, which I used to have originally, or the Super 7, they're identical in this respect. These pieces were all turned up on the lathe, with the exception of this change wheel, I'll come back to that, turned up out of the lathe on various bits of scrap. And what we got is really just two parts. This piece of steel, there's nothing magic about this diameter, that was obviously just the diameter I started with, is a piece of steel. This end is turned a decent fit on to go into the uh, internal board and mandrel of the lathe, decent fit. And this end is turned to be a decent fit on a standard MIFA change wheel. Not tight, not a press fit, but a good fit with no slop. And then what we've got here is another simple terming job. Bit of a taper on the end, it's gone walkabout. Bit of a thread on the end, don't know what that is. Which fits it uh, through this. I've also slotted the end of this uh, this part in four places, just with a hacksaw, nothing fancy. I did this years and years and years ago, um, and you'll see the purpose of that in a minute. So the thread and sort of slightly tapered portion at the end, uh, threaded rod goes into the uh, into the board, I don't know what to call these parts actually, goes into this board and clearly when this nut is tightened up at this end it just expands this end so that it's a nice neat grip fit in the bore of the ML7 spindle. Any MIFA change wheel will do, depending on what you're doing. This one actually, curiously, um, was one I was in a box of bits, a freebie, and I don't, can't imagine how anybody managed to do it, but it had been broken clear across this point here. So I, uh, I wouldn't use it as a, as a change wheel, I have to say, but for the purpose of an indexing plate, um, I just glued the two parts together along the break and reinforced the glued part with a, uh, a piece of steel which I uh, glued around the outside if memory serves me right and that's probably something that's been reused for something else because I don't know what those two marks are and glued the whole thing together um, and it does run true and for what I'm about to use it for it's ideal so the change wheel fits on the end here and there's a decent fit. Clearly when that nut is tightened, this end expands by a fraction of a thou and grips neatly in the in the bore of the Myford mandrel. I'm about to need to index um, six, six places. So as you can see, using some uh, felt tip, I've put six points around the outside to just show me uh, where the detente's got to go for the six faces I actually want to work on um, in case I lose the plot, which I usually do. So the detente mechanism, which is this thing here with a simple plunger, um, has now just been moved down to engage in the starting point for what I'm going to do on this change wheel. It's just bolted to the belt cover on the lathe, um, nothing fancy. There's no movement on my cover, I've got it adjusted up on the uh, on the bearing side so it stays fairly, fairly rigid in this direction, so it's fine for what I want to do. And if I now tighten the nut, which has vanished, around the back here, um, 
this submander or whatever you want to call it will grip truly and tightly into the into the mandrel of the Super 7. So I'll just uh, tighten that nut up and we'll see how we get on. Everything's in the way really. Right, I've tightened the nut up on the end here. And if I move the kind of indexing thing temporarily out of the way, very difficult to do this one-handed, like that. <laughs> Effectively, this change wheel is now locked to the spindle. Um, and uh, that gives us the opportunity to do the indexing. So there we are, all locked back in place. I mean, this is not a precision job. There is, you might argue, a modicum of movement at this end. But for what I'm about to do, it makes no difference whatsoever. Because um, I'm just going to mill 20 thou off, the, off of six flats of a bit of hex bar. Don't ask. Um, so it's perfectly fine for that. So this is my very gash homemade lathe cross drilling attachment. Or in, as is going to be the current case, cross milling attachment. Um, very simply made. Um, the spindle's at centre height, and that was done by simply uh, mounting this bit on the lay cross slide and uh, drilling and boring through from the uh, from the chuck. So it can't be wrong. That's absolutely fine. And um, it's actually, this is actually a large block of brass, but it doesn't have to be that. Any bit of steel or anything would do. I haven't fitted any bearings to the end of this because of the brass bronze or whatever that is, I don't really know what it is um, but if you used a bit of steel you could certainly fit a couple of cheap uh, taper bearings, one at both, end, at both ends or just this end probably um, to take the play out but for what I do this works fine what I'm looking for here is to take approximately 20 thou off of each of the flats of this uh, piece of hex brass to leave a finish dimension across the flats of about 0.283 which give or take should accept a 3BA spanner so that is the plan this is just gently touching the bit of brass just about um, the cross slide reading is probably not see this is only one, two, about 43. So I need to turn the dial, turn the, the screw until it reads 63, and that should be 20 thou. And we'll repeat the other side and see what measurement we end up with. I'll just turn this to the other side like that. Which we've got it right, should be about right. Um, my dial is still set to 63, so if I now wind this along using the lead screw, we'll see how we get on. Battery on my old drill is finished, it's dying. Well, it actually mics at 294. I was shooting for 283, so this cross slide needs to go in about another 5 thou, I reckon. So, a cross slide reading on this dial of 67 
is giving me a measurement across these flats of about 0.282. I was shooting for, shooting for 0.283 but frankly for a freebie ace banner that's going to do me. So I've just now got to repeat this for the other flats without moving this dial actually and just use this to mill sideways to uh, just reduce the rest of them. Absolutely fine. So because I've marked six places on this wheel using my felt, trusty felt tip, all I've got to do is to come around, put the detente down which I have done against my other marker and uh, with a fair wind everything should line up for what I'm doing. Now reducing down this piece of hex bar clearly is a job that might have been better done using the index table and the mill but looking at it the mill's been set up for something else don't ask me what I can't remember but it's clearly something and the idea of showing this on the lathe if you don't happen to have an indexing table or a, or a vertical mill or any mill um, my hope is it just shows you what can be done with just a modicum of ingenuity in conjunction with my homemade uh, drilling attachment that fits on the cross slide this indexing arrangement can obviously be used to either cross drill parts or as shown in this picture on a pitch circle diameter drill the holes for a cylinder end cover on a small steam engine and it gets a lot of use in that respect. <laughs> 